Namaste viewers and friends. Um, here I am with a new topic and video today. And in today's topic, which is quite interesting, we are going to discuss about asthma and bronchitis, but we are going to focus on the yoga therapy and how yoga therapy actually is uh, so effective in treating asthma and bronchitis as compared to the conventional treatments. Before we start the video, I would like to request to the people who are new to my channel to subscribe and going forward if you like the video then do not forget to like and share well asthma and bronchitis are prevalent respiratory disorders that significantly impact the global public health uh, in this video i am going to discuss about uh, the potential therapeutic benefits of yoga therapy in managing and alleviating symptoms associated with asthma and bronchitis in general the, these are uh, include in the respiratory disorders well drawing on the scientific clinical studies we examine the physiological and the psychological aspects of these respiratory conditions but we are going to stick to the yogic perspective or approach to managing asthma and bronchitis in this video and would not go into the conventional treatments a lot because uh, the purpose of this video is actually to create awareness about yoga therapy because a lot of people are unaware um, about uh, the potential of yoga therapy uh, and different techniques and the modalities it uh, uses to treat different disorders in this case the respiratory disorders like asthma and bronchitis so this is going to be a comprehensive overview about how yoga exerts its effects and uh, and provides a, a exhaustive and uh, a proper treatment and this would help us to contribute to the growing body of knowledge on integrative approaches to respiratory health. Well, asthma and bronchitis pose substantial challenges to healthcare systems worldwide, affecting millions of individuals. Yoga and ancient practice encompassing physical postures, breathing exercises, meditation and ethical principles has gained attention as a potential uh, uh, complementary therapy. For respiratory disorders well understanding the pathophysiology of asthma and bronchitis is essential for exploring the potential therapeutic interventions asthma involves chronic airway inflammation and bronchoconstriction while bronchitis is characterized by inflammation of the bronchial tubes and increased mucus production both conditions result in airflow limitation leading to symptoms uh, such as coughing, wheezing, and shortness of breath. Uh, numerous studies have reported positive effects of yoga on respiratory function and the management of its symptoms. Yoga's emphasis on controlled breathing, which is pranayama, enhances respiratory muscle strength, improves lung capacity, and promotes relaxation. Additionally, asanas, which are physical yogic postures, enhance overall fitness. Uh, potentially reducing the severity and frequency of respiratory symptoms. Yogics, well, yoga's holistic approach recognizes the interconnection of the mind and body. Mindfulness, meditation, and stress reduction techniques incorporated in yoga uh, may contribute to improved. Uh, psychological well-being potentially alleviating the psychological burden often associated with chronic respiratory conditions because they can be quite annoying actually if you cannot get rid of these symptoms but you are just trying to suppress it or manage it to somehow however yoga helps in uh, removing these symptoms completely uh, with a sustained practice over the period of time in fact several clinical studies have explored the impact of yoga on respiratory health findings indicate that regular yoga practice may lead to improve pul pulmonary function uh, reduced uh, medication uh, dependence and enhanced quality of life for individuals with asthma and bronchitis however it depends from case to case uh, as we say in yoga and ayurveda and holistic healing that you cannot have a generalized treatment for any individual we need to uh, look into the symptoms the history the severity and the constitution as per ayurveda 
um, and also we have to look into uh, the body type uh, what kind of uh, uh, flexibility the person has and also uh, the state of the mind uh, other associated comorbidities the person might be having and based on that only you can design a yoga therapeutic sequence for for any of your clients or patients approaching you yoga therapy for asthma and bronchitis includes a combination of asanas pranayama meditation relaxation techniques uh, tailored to improve respiratory function and overall well-being these asanas which i am going to uh, show and also explain a bit about is only for informative purposes and do not try to imitate or start practicing on your own unless you have been trained or taught by a uh, a skilled and professional yoga therapist or teacher i would advise you to consult a yoga therapist and uh, after consultation that therapist will design a sequence for you which would be quite customized and tailored for your uh, body type and uh, health condition however uh, this would also give you some idea about how to manage your asthma and bronchitis and going forward you can definitely take help of a skilled professional so the first asana that I would include is a Tadasana, the mountain pose. Uh, I'm not going to show you the demonstration here, but I'm uh, going to put a clips here, which you can obviously uh, look into to, to identify which asana I'm talking about. Though I'm not going to go and show you the exact demonstration or technique about how to go into the asana or come out of it or stay in the final position. Um, for that, you need to learn with the teacher personally, uh, physically present in front of the teacher. So I'm going to stick to the benefits only over here. In the Tadasana, it helps to strengthen the respiratory muscles and improve the posture. When you raise your hands up, your entire spine gets a proper stretch and extension and it opens your lungs, it opens your diaphragm and you are able to breathe better. It opens your airways as well because it improves the lung capacity. It promotes deep breathing and the lung expansion. That's why it's a beautiful amazing therapeutic asana for respiratory disorders like asthma and bronchitis the next asana is a sukhasana which is also known as the easy posture or the simple cross leg sitting position as we normally do um, this asana also encourages relaxation and mindful breathing it provides a comfortable seated position for pranayama that is the reason this asana should be practiced uh, not just for respiratory disorders, but for, 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 for any uh, sitting uh, position, this is a starting position. A lot of people who are not used to sitting cross leg on the floor might find some kind of difficulty initially uh, to get accustomed. But if they keep practicing, uh, their uh, muscles, the hips and their knees and their ankles would be trained to sit in that position and they would reap the benefits of it. You cannot go in the lotus or uh, Siddha Yoni Asana or Siddha Asana or any other sitting uh, asana if you have not mastered the Sukhasana to start with. Well, the next asana is the Bhujang Asana, I mean famously known as a Cobra Pose. Uh, this asana also helps in expanding the chest and strengthens the respiratory muscles. It facilitates the deeper breathing and also brings the pranic uh, force uh, towards your lungs it helps to concentrate it over there that's the reason it heals it it stimulates the lung function and enhances the breath capacity it is also an amazing asana for your uh, lower back and also digestive organs it puts a negative pressure on your abdomen that's why it's aid it helps in aiding the digestive uh, function next asana is a setu bandhasana the bridge pose uh, Bridge pose is also an amazing asana. It's sort of inversion, uh, but if you observe, if you if you have done this asana, you would definitely agree with me that it helps in opening your chest. It improves the lung capacity uh, and strengthens the back and the leg muscles. The most amazing thing about yoga is that if you practice uh, one asana for your lungs or your respiratory disorders, it helps in uh, strengthening uh, the other parts of your body as well. It's it's just not focusing on that part itself because it's uh, it's yoga is quite integrated in its approach whether it is pranayama asana or relaxation or meditation it gives you overall benefits it helps to improve let's say if you are doing a setu mandasana you are focusing on your respiratory disorder that's definitely going to help it but it's also going to help 
to increase the strength in your legs in your knees in your shins and of course your pelvic and it also is an amazing asana for your back issues well the next asana is the marjara asana also known as a cat in the cow's pose it promotes flexibility in the spine and improves breathing it also encourages uh, coordination of breath and movement and it actually helps to uh, stimulate uh, the nerves associated with the thoracic cavity which is the chest region it also uh, it also facilitates the proper breathing it improves the spinal uh, deformities and uh, the abnormal curves thus it's an amazing asana for the slip disc but also for uh, i mean back issues but also for the respiratory issues because actually it brings the coordination of the breath with the movement that awareness is quite important when you are practicing yoga because a lot of times people are not able to breathe properly because they lose that awareness of the breath instead of inhalation they are doing exhalation then you don't get benefits out of uh, that, uh, that posture because breath is equally important um, as compared to uh, along with I would say not as compared to along with your uh, movements uh, physical movements in, within any posture. Next beautiful asana is the Adho Mukhswan Asana also known as a downward facing dog. Uh, this asana also helps in increasing the lung capacity. It helps in toning the respiratory muscles. Uh, remember your, your chest is connected to your diaphragm and in a way it is connected to your spine. So obviously uh, you will get the double benefits. You will also improve your spinal strength, your spinal curve. Um, stimulate the spinal um, uh, nerves but at the same time you would also increase um, the lung capacity and enhance the capacity of lungs to breathe deeper and proper and that's what we want here next asana is the Ustrasana the camel pose uh, this asana is also amazing though it is it can be a bit intense if you have neck shoulder or the back issue so do not practice this or you can do a variation of it uh, in my yoga therapy the teacher training programs and online courses I teach different variations so I, I can actually teach you uh, how to do it for yourself because your body can be different than somebody else probably you have a back issue along with respiratory issue which can be an issue actually because most most of people who are having a respiratory disorder they try to their shoulders go down and they, they actually drop their shoulders due to which their chest goes inside and due to which you get abnormal curve on your upper spine when you get the abnormal curve on the upper spine then your neck is affected and it goes in your lower back as well over the period of time if you don't improve your posture so everything is interconnected in the body okay one thing puts a synergistic effect on the other part good or bad that depends uh, Ustrasana once again I got diversion a bit uh, Ustrasana is an amazing asana if you are practicing Ustrasana you can agree with me that uh, it actually stretches your chest completely from your shoulder because your chest muscles are connected with your shoulder here and also uh, over here in diaphragm so basically it stretches the diaphragm it stretches the shoulders and it, stre it stretch your uh, chest out it improves the lung capacity it uh, facilitates the normal breathing if not very deep but constant normal breathing is very important while practicing this asana and also it helps in improving your posture your spinal curves and your strengthens your spine stimulates your spinal nerves abdomen so this asana has uh, multiple benefits but one of the benefit is basically it helps in improving the lung capacity it really enhances your breathing capacity which is compromised uh, normally in asthma and bronchitis and respiratory disorders. So this is one asana that you can practice. Uh, there can be a lot of asanas which I can include, but normally my approach to healing a patient or my client through yoga therapy is to stick with few asanas, standard core asanas, and then include other breathing techniques, meditation, relaxation to create a holistic Yoga, yoga therapy approach instead of giving too many asanas the person will get tired because remember the people who are having asthma and bronchitis might not have that kind of a strength they might not be able to breathe well so they will get tired easily as compared to anybody who breathes normally so that is something you have to consider if you're a yoga therapist or an aspiring yoga therapist that you need to include things which are really important and do not 
overstuff the sequence. Let's move to the pranayama because we are dealing with the respiration and breathing. So pranayama has a direct, direct benefit for the respiratory disorders here. Uh, I won't call them breathing exercises because they are far, far beyond an exercise word. Uh, I would call them uh, yoga in itself. So let's train ourselves in breathing. If you are going through asthma and bronchitis or COPD, then of course you have to take care, uh, which I'm going to talk a little bit in the end, but you also have to breathe properly. So you focus on your deep breath. You breathe in a yogi breath, which is, which is like when you inhale, you expand your stomach, your diaphragm, and uh, of course your lungs and your clavicles. Clavicles are nothing but uh, a kind of a connection of your a bone which is connecting uh, from your shoulders going all the way to your collar region and and connects to your chest so it helps in breathing a lot of people uh, who who have their blocked airways they are not able to breathe from their lungs forget about their belly so they are able to use this clavicle to at least get some breath in and out um, so we are going to train ourselves to breathe deeply and this yogi breath actually is going to increase your lung capacity that is what that is what we are looking for that is our goal to increase the lung capacity and also broaden the airways so that oxygenation I and mean, respiration can happen it strengthens the diaphragm and improves the respiratory efficiency next is anilom vilom pranayama which is alternate nostril breathing there are different variations of anilom vilom i would not suggest you to do a breath retention which is kumbak kumbak because that is extremely counterproductive uh, please do not do the breath retention uh, just go for the normal um, alternate nostril flow like close your right nostril breathe in from your left to start with and then when you want to exhale close the left and open the right and exhale from the right and then repeat uh, keep repeating this uh, cycle of breathing it balances the flow of breath between the nostrils it balances the Ida and Pingla Nadi as we teach in Kundalini Yoga. That's the reason it is an amazing pranayama for most of the disorders because it reduces your anxiety and stress which are the biggest obstacle uh, in healing process. It calms the nervous system and it enhances the lung function. It improves respiration also. It helps you to breathe slowly. When you breathe slowly, you breathe deeply and then you give more uh, time for a respiratory exchange between O2 and CO2 in your deeper pockets of your lungs. Okay, so cultivate a habit of practicing this pranayama at least 10 to 15 minutes in a day. You can repeat it twice, that's amazing. You can do 10 minutes in the morning and 10 minutes in the evening, and there's no restriction. Of course, you should not practice any pranayama just before and after the food, uh, but especially after the food. But if you want to relax yourself, you can practice it anytime. This is amazing breath actually for uh, inducing a deeper states of relaxation and, and balancing the Ida and Pingla. The next pranayama is the Ujjayi pranayama which is known as victorious breath. It involves the gentle constriction of the throat palate during inhalation exhalation due to which you create a kind of a humming sound you create. And that actually uh, opens up your Vishuddhi chakra but also it uh, resonates in your anahata chakra which is your lung and the heart region where we are focusing so it opens your anahata vishuddhi and anahata that's why this is an amazing pranayama for treating the respiratory disorders next amazing pranayama is a brahmari pranayama also known as the humming bee breath uh, this pranayama produces a humming sound during exhalation it calms the mind it reduces the anxiety and it promotes the respiratory well-being it also opens up your another chakra the sound of the humming bee uh, it creates a subtle vibration subtle for the people actually who are not centered in their uh, awareness of the breath or their mind is actually roaming here and there but for people who have been practicing this and along with they are also engaged in practicing other meditative and mindful practices they would be able to feel directly it creates a strong vibration in your heart region. It opens the pranic blockages in your lungs and thereby it's an amazing asana for respiratory disorders. 
Now, there are certain relaxation methods that people should uh, include in their uh, yoga therapy sequence. The first is yoga nidra. People who have respiratory disorders, they have emotional suppressions. They have uh, uh, anxiety issues, which can also trigger asthmatic attack. Uh, but normally it has been found that people who have been emotionally suppressed in their childhood, either by their parents or by their teachers uh, or by their life partner or in relationships, uh, they are not able to express. So they take, they stuff a lot of things in their heart. They don't speak up and that is the reason we need to cleanse the Vishuddhi and the Anatha Chakra for, for treating the respiratory disorders. I'm correlating my uh, basically knowledge from Kundalini Yoga to Hatha Yoga because yoga is all the one. It's it's different way we look look at it. You know, it's an integrated practice. So, uh, Yoga Nidra is extremely useful in healing your respiratory disorders because it induces deeper state of relaxation. So, when you caught when you when the high levels of cortisol are floating in your blood, obviously it would not help you to relax, it would obstruct the healing process because healing happens in a relaxed state and if you are stressed, means you are not relaxed or vice versa. So obviously we need to first relax ourselves. So the Yoga Nidra helps to relax you, it helps to broaden your air passages because relaxation helps in uh, broadening things, I mean relaxing effect and the stress actually tries to constrict things. And that's exactly what we want, the, uh, the air, uh, the bronchioles or the airway passages are actually uh, constricted, they are narrowed down. So we need to exp make them expand and we need to relax it so that air can freely flow through the airways or bronchioles. So yoga nidra would relax your nervous system and the nervous system would, would actually relax your all the body parts and also the passages, including your respiratory passages. Yoga Nidra is available freely on uh, law, on YouTube and different teachers have already recorded it. I have not done it because uh, I, I somehow I haven't done it but probably I will do it in the future. But in my courses, in my classes, I teach Yoga Nidra. So you can learn Yoga Nidra, how to instruct as a teacher. But if you are doing for yourself, then just play any good Yoga Nidra uh, with which you connect and you find it pleasing. And you can conclude your practice uh, either by Shavasana, which involves lying down in a relaxed state for at least 10 minutes. It facilitates the conscious relaxation and integration of the yoga practice. So if you don't do Shavasana, then you have missed the opportunity of uh, getting all the benefits out of your practice because in the end you must relax. Yoga is all about activation and relaxation, but relaxation comes precedes the practice and it also succeeds the practice. So you need to be relaxed to start with. In the, in the, in the middle stages, we activate, but we relax. We activate and we relax. It is quite contrary to the physical sport culture where you are activated, activated, and then you don't relax enough. Then you can also do the progressive muscle relaxation also known as a PMR. I call it an active relaxation where you sequentially tense uh, individual parts of your body with a breath awareness and then you you consciously relax like you can say that like expand your abdomen or expand your chest expand it expand it and you retain your breath and release as you release you release your chest okay so you can also make a fist and you can make your fist tight and then you know you just make it quite tight you know it's all tensed and then you say relax and then you relax so this induces additional um, you know relaxation it, it helps in relaxing you better because when you tense your body parts and then you relax it you feel more relaxing effect and there's a science behind it actually it facilitates the conscious relaxation and integration of the yoga practice as i said but it also helps in relaxing you much deeper i mean whichever works for you i mean for certain people this works better than yoga nidra because in yoga nidra uh, they start thinking something else but they are more involved here because they are actively tensing and relaxing their individual body parts 
uh, I mean starting from their face all the way to their toes so there are different techniques not every technique is for everyone because we are having a different consciousness we have different mental states physical states emotional states so obviously different techniques uh, are there in yoga and uh, you need to find out which techniques work for you at any stage then in mudra I also uh, heal people through mudra therapy because it's similar to sojok therapy or the acupressure where you press certain points in your hand which are connected to the specific parts of your body if you believe in it i've i've i i would tell you with my own experience that i have treated certain things just by pressing keep pressing on my probably twice or thrice in a day or two to or three three minutes you can actually get benefits um, for these disorders so you can practice matsya mudra i'm showing in the demonstration here uh, it involves the interlocking the fingers with extended thumbs and it promotes deep breathing it expands the chest and supports respiratory health so this uh, yoga therapy sequence uh, aims to enhance respiratory function it reduces your symptoms it promotes overall well-being for individuals with respiratory disorders like asthma and bronchitis it is essential to practice under the guidance of a qualified experienced uh, yoga therapist uh, because uh, uh, modifications would be needed based on individual health conditions additionally individuals should consult a healthcare provider or the existing healthcare provider or doctor before starting any yoga therapy sequence because we don't want to create a contradiction um, between the two opinions there should be a congruence there should be uh, a merging of opinions uh, but that's entirely the call of uh, yours and your family members but i would strongly advise you to use yoga therapy and ayurveda for healing these chronic lifestyle disorders um, asthma can be quite uh, a pain and annoying for people and it can actually uh, compromise the quality of your life it can give you so much of restrictions and limitations um, that can have far-reaching impact uh, on your mental physical and emotional health the integration of these practices into daily life can contribute to improved respiratory health and a more holistic approach uh, to your well-being so this was about uh, yoga therapy approach for uh, treating respiratory disorders like asthma bronchitis or cpod i mentioned uh, in the earlier part of the video that i'm going to talk a little bit about the lifestyle restrictions so here i would like to give you few lifestyle restrictions it is not exhaustive because it's a generic video for informative purposes uh, however i teach in my yoga therapy courses as a case study for different disorders and different individuals so if you are more curious and interested and if you are an aspiring yoga teacher or a student then you can definitely join my courses i uh, deliver my courses online and residential more in goa and bangalore now as well you can definitely join those courses there is a schedule on my web page and you can email us you can text on whatsapp and engage us for further inquiry or queries well the first thing that you should stop is smoking if you are been a smoker then you should definitely stop smoking because that's not going to work for you you can't do yoga therapy and also smoke you can't do ayurveda and you can also smoke you can't take medication you also smoke when you have a respiratory disorder like copd asthma bronchitis so stop smoking if you love yourself you want to heal yourself you have to give up certain things which are basically the unhealthy lifestyle choices the second thing that you should do is to avoid foods that create mucus in ayurveda the cough aggravating foods like sweet sour uh, dairy cold drinks and beverages uh, should be avoided fried excess fried and food should be avoided as well in dairy everything comes in dairy cheese um, you can take you can take little bit of butter in cooking but do not take extra and also avoid cheese and other junk food of course the third category is the junk food and the processed food because they have a lot of additives and chemicals and preservatives that's going to uh, create allergic reaction a lot of people get asthma because of bad food bad diet and food practices or choices so obviously you should eat clean eat fresh 
and clean without any chemicals. Then you should avoid stress and anxiety, especially the emotional stress that might be coming from your relationships and household issues or the work stress. Uh, you should avoid, definitely you should avoid because if you are stressed, it can directly give you an asthmatic attack. Um, avoid living in a very cold weather because that's not going to work for you. The humidity is good for you. If you live in a uh, wet and the humid weather, that's going to lubricate your lungs. Uh, but it also depends from case to case. There are certain people, asthmatic people who would feel better in the cold weather as compared to the humid and the wet weather, vice versa. So, but in general, you should avoid the cold, dry weather because that's going to dry your cough and you will cough more. I mean, dry your mucus and then you would cough more. These are the few life lifestyle restrictions, but there can be many restrictions based on the individual case. Uh, well, so this was all about in this video. Uh, as I promised that the, my videos would be little comprehensive and exhaustive because I would definitely want people to watch my videos and learn something out of it. And if you want to learn more, then you can join my courses. So if you have liked the video, please like and share. And if you're new to my channel, do not forget to subscribe so that you get uh, notifications about uh, upcoming videos in the days and weeks ahead. Uh, so I'll see you in the next video. Until then, take a very good care of yourself. Namaste.